Well, good morning, it's Charlie ZL2CTM. Well, I've been away for a week on a uh, business trip, so uh, I'm sort of back in the house now and have an opportunity to uh, get back into playing around with this amplifier. Um, so, so what I've done here, I've, um, I did what I wanted to play around with, and that's to have the, uh, the input transformer and the output transformer uh, using the, uh, the ferrite rods. So the input transformer is a 4-2, uh, let's say again, is an 8-4. to four. Uh, the yellow windings you can just see there, uh, the input, and then the output is the grey every second winding there. Uh, haven't done any kind of pile winding, or it's just straight um, uh, interleaved, or the ratio of 2 to 1 for that particular uh, transformer. Uh, the output transformer there, single turn on, on the brown wire coming around, uh, with a centre tap at the end with the VCC coming in, and then three turns on uh, the secondary. So exactly as per the original amplifier from W6JL. Um, in terms of its performance, um, it's probably in line with what you'd expect uh, with these transformers. Um, not very good, but uh, that was the whole idea of this first part, was just to play around with those just to see um, how they would perform, uh, if at all. Uh, the output low-pass filter there is for 20 meters, so I'll do this uh, particular test here uh, at 14 megahertz. Uh, just for interest's sake, uh, sitting on the bottom is an old uh, um, computer, uh, 120 millimeter uh, fan, uh, and at the moment I don't have any thermostats sitting on top of the uh, the heatsink. Again, just that simple, just for playing around with um, uh, aluminium extrusion there. So at the moment, uh, once it's keyed, uh, that fan comes on there. So all the switch is doing there is just for, for test purposes. Uh, we've got the hot VCC line coming in there, which is going directly to the two MOSFETs, and then through a switch being provided to the two biasing um, circuits there that provide the uh, the DC bias for the gates. Um, yep, so uh, probably nothing else to say there. So in terms of uh, sort of arcing it up there, let me just zoom back a bit. There we are zoomed out, it's a shame. Right, so... Uh, at the moment we've got 14 megahertz coming in, um, if you were to key, and we see our output there. So at the moment I've got 10 volts peak to peak coming in uh, and getting around uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 volts, uh, 50 volts on the output. So if I was just to change the frequency there, so that's currently sitting at 14 megs, uh, that's a 20 meter low pass filter, and this is it's under drop off there, so that's 9 megs. Um, and if you go beyond, of course, uh, 14 megs, then we'll see the drop off there with the effect of that uh, low pass filter. So, uh, all in all, it's it was an interesting to play around with the uh, the rod transformers there. Um, what I would like to do now, um, or what I am going to do, more the point, um, I'm not going to play around with trying to vary the turns ratios for those two transformers. Um, the whole idea here was to to build the amplifier reasonably close to what W6JL did. Um, so what I intend to do now is, is take these two rod transformers out and to go with a more traditional binocular core. Um, what I'm thinking of doing for the primary on uh, the output transformer is just to get some uh, some sheath from some coaxial cable and just collapse that down I think uh, to pass through um, and then three turns uh, using this uh, blue wire here, so I think I've got enough room there to make it all work. Uh, and then on the input, I'll just use a, um, a slightly smaller uh, binocular core transformer. So we'll do that, and uh, we'll do some comparisons, and uh, we'll go from there. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, so I swapped out those two uh, rod transformers uh, in lieu of um, the two binocular core. Um, exactly the same turns configuration. Uh, on the input transformer here we have a, a primary of 8 turns and a secondary of 4 feeding into the two devices. And then on the output we have uh, one single turn made up of uh, squashed um, outer sheath of some coax, uh, centre tapped for the 13.8 volts, and then a secondary of uh, 4 turns. So exactly the same configuration as the original amplifier. Um, 
and no other difference. So again, those 2,000 picofarad series or two of those series capacitors across the primary, um, exactly the same as it was in the original configuration. So just uh, coming back a bit on the old zoom. So same drive as we had with the two rods. Uh, and rather than having 50 volts peak to peak for that particular drive, it's now uh, leapt up to 64. Um, so a slight increase there. Uh, and for interest sake, we would just do uh, up, let's just drop the frequency down to the 40 meter band. So down to 7 megs. Um, and if I was to crank it up to there, then we're getting uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 123 odd uh, volts. So uh, getting close to that sort of uh, 38 watts for a 1 watt drive. Um, I, uh, I don't know if that's um, in line with the original uh, design or the original performance more to the point uh, from W6JL. Uh, uh, I unfortunately couldn't get hold of his original uh, article that he wrote to find out what the, what the, uh, the performance was. But for a simple setup like this, um, uh, that's quite good. And I must admit, what is appealing to me, for me personally, uh, with those IRF Z24Ns, the two MOSFETs there, uh, because they've got such high current carrying capability, um, you can get the same level of power coming out uh, for the set 13.8 volts coming in. Um, as opposed to, say, the RF 510s, where to get uh, an equivalent level of power, you really do need to start running uh, the VCC rail uh, significantly higher than 13.8, so it'd be at you know, 24 uh, plus odd volts. Uh, and for me personally, that just makes things a heck of a lot more uh, convenient that I don't have to run two different power supplies to run uh, the main amplifier and the power amplifier. So, again, for me personally, uh, that's quite appealing. Um, some other sort of thoughts and takeaways uh, on this. Um, I know up front, and it's and I know people don't agree, uh, but the use of these uh, simple um, aluminium extrusions as a as a heatsink uh, from the from my playing around here this morning uh, seems to work uh, well really well. Um, I'm certainly not frying eggs on those, and I'm certainly not too hot to touch. Um, which I think is a function of, of this fan here, sort of blowing uh, a reasonable amount of air over quite a large surface area, uh, worked well. Uh, I think if I was to do this properly, uh, rather than just having the fan coming on when the radio is keyed, so this is what the switch here is actively doing, it would be the, the transmit relay, um, so the, the VCC coming on to the, the drains of the two MOSFETs is, is hot, uh, and then the uh, 13.8 volts being provided to the two uh, bias networks uh, get switched on when the radio is keyed. Well, at the moment I've got that 12 volts going to the bias network is also turning on the fan. Um, I think a better option would be to have uh, that or the fan being powered by a thermostat uh, physically connected to the, uh, the two heat sinks. Um, I didn't do that for simplicity but uh, that would be certainly a, a better way of doing business. So, uh, yeah, uh, unconventional in terms of a configuration, but um, I would argue quite a cheap way of doing it uh, with the wood and the aluminium. Um, and it is certainly something I wouldn't mind exploring a little bit further. Um, what I intend to do at this point in time is probably just push this to the side just a little bit. Uh, I want to do some work on the main rig, ready for some QRP activities that are coming up. I uh, just want to swap out the antenna amplifier for the uh, J310 version that we made a couple of videos ago. Uh, that seemed to perform very well, so I wouldn't mind just inducing that. Uh, and then just have another look over the circuit just to see if there's anything else that needs to be changed. Um, but all in all, that, that radio under there is actually working really well. Okay, well I'm going to say 73 is here. Um, like I say, quite an interesting little experiment um, and certainly enjoyed using those uh, those um, those 24 N MOSFETs uh, even with a slightly higher input capacitance uh, didn't seem to be too hard to drive them and like I say 1 watt in and 30 watt, 38 watts out so 15 odd dB gain um, I thought was quite good uh, given the, um, the 13.8 volt drive anyway I'm going to say 73 is there and uh, think about the next project, but like I say for now it's going to be 
putting some work onto that uh, QRP rig and getting that up on air. Okay, 73 is all.